notched on the gridiron in September. Perfected in the magic of March. For the fans who love the crunch of the pads, prefer a dunk and expect nothing but the best. It's Bigger Tech. Here's Steve Dace. And here is November. That means the games you remember in college football are played in November. It also means the beginning of college basketball season as well. So one of the best times of the best time of the year. I'm Steve Dace, Aaron McIntyre, our co-host. You ready to go, brother? You bet. Let's get right to it then. Let's get to the Big Five this week on Bigger Ten and the Spoiler Makers Strike again. An incredible stat. I mean, why are they the Purdue spoiler makers? Look right here. Purdue has 17 wins all time against AP top five teams while being unranked. There are plenty of schools that don't have 17 wins all time against AP top five teams, period. Let alone while being unranked, the next closest is 11. So not even close. I think it's actually Illinois is the next closest. Purdue, their 17th win as an unranked team against a top five team. And they threw over, around, and through Michigan State's one weakness as a team is that Swiss cheese secondary. And my goodness, that, that those, those holes in the Swiss cheese are a lot bigger after what Aiden O'Connell did to, did to Sparty on Saturday, which, as we'll point out here in a few minutes, really opened up the Big Ten East race, opened up the playoff rankings. We'll talk about that as well. First time since 1984 that Purdue has beaten two AP top 10 teams in the same season. I remember, they did this to your Hawkeyes a little bit earlier this year as well. Safe to say, at the very least, whatever hot seat Jeff Brown was on before the season, and who knows how hot that that seat was pretty obvious that things cooled off quite a bit here Aaron McIntyre yep and uh, I mean that was one of the conversations we had not only uh, last year but I I think it was the year before as well how are things going what are things going to look like for Purdue um, you know, but David Bell, they had, that's, that's great. He's good, but it's okay. You know, that's, that's pretty good. But what are things going to look like when you don't, uh, when you don't have that, uh, weapon anymore or, uh, the player who plays for the Cardinals now, I'm t- having a total brain Rondale fart, Moore. Rondale Moore. What's yeah. going to, what's it going to look like? Well, we've seen, I, I think it's not, I, I think maybe people who are saying that like me, I, I think I at least thought that way. I, I think they had it backwards. Because I don't think it's necessarily that the players that are driving the system. I think the system is that he's installed there. Uh, one, it's great. And uh, two, I think the players that he's had, whether it's Rondale Moore or David Bell, they just they can they can take it, that offense to the next level. And it's it's fun to watch and, and fun to to see, especially if you're not on the receiving end of it. But uh, yeah, as, as far as uh, as far as Purdue and, and Jeff Brom goes, you know. Uh, let's see what they can. Uh, let's let's see if they can uh, keep building on this because we we've joked around about their defense as well. That's quietly been one of the best defenses yeah. in the Big Ten so far this year. It so has. yeah, you know if you can pair that offense with a defense like that, and if they can just get some consistency, I, I'm I'm looking at this Purdue team. How did you lose to Minnesota? That that's what I'm yeah. trying to figure out. How did you lose to Notre Dame? I I too. That's that's something I'm trying to figure out too. So uh, hats off to them for uh, Michigan State. You know, um, as an Iowa fan, been here, done that. Um, that it's just frustrating. Here's why: Wisconsin, vintage Wisconsin football. They will put you underneath them like a bully, sit on you until you can't breathe anymore. That's that's their game plan, except with running the ball. That's that's their game plan. Just sit on you until you you've lost all of your air. It's the exact same game plan with Purdue. At least that's the way it feels like. Uh, having watched this a couple of times, they will just sit on you with the passing game, the short uh, intermediate routes. Uh, they'll just sit on you and take the air out of the ball. And it's it's funny to think about that with a passing offense, but uh, that's what they do. So uh, to Michigan State fans, to Sparty fans, I, I I feel your pain. It's very reminiscent of 1999. 1999 was the last time Michigan and Michigan State were both ranked as high 
this late in the year as they were two weeks ago. In that game, Michigan was number three. And kind of a guy named Tom Brady at quarterback. Remember him? I don't know if you can remember that name. Michigan State was ranked number 11, had Plaxico Burris. Uh, he was fairly good, too. Cl- great game. And Sparty gets the huge win at home. Very next week, goes on the road to take on Drew Brees and that Purdue passing attack and loses that game. It's very reminiscent of that history. So let's take a look now then at where things stand in the Big Ten West. Heading into these final few weeks, here's the remaining schedules for all the teams involved. We're going to put Purdue there, even though they don't control their own destiny. Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin kind of do. Wisconsin and Minnesota definitely do. Iowa needs a little help. Purdue needs a lot more help. Um, so here's where things stand. Iowa's got Minnesota and Illinois at home and then at Nebraska. They appear to have uh, a, a manageable schedule there. They'll be solid favorites in all those games. Hawkeyes are about a touchdown favorite this weekend against Minnesota. The Gophers have to go to Iowa and then a really bad sandwich game spot at Indiana before the uh, the game for the Axe against Wisconsin. So that is a classic sandwich game spot for Minnesota uh, that is sandwiched right between their two biggest rivals. Purdue's got to go to Ohio State, so congrats for that big upset. You're a 20-point underdog in Columbus this week. But then look at those last two games at Northwestern, Indiana at home. They will be huge favorites in both of those games. Uh, and then Wisconsin – which has a very favorable schedule because they played all these historically great teams at the start of the year. They close with Northwestern and Nebraska at home and then at Minnesota. So you've got in the header there, you're the guy that decides that messaging. You've got it. It's Wisconsin's to lose. I take it then that looking at those schedules, that's kind of your take on it. Yeah. I think the only possibility necessarily, the only possibility is if Nebraska finally pulls something out of its hat uh, let's see, are they playing? Uh, yeah, they're playing on the road at, at Madison. If Nebraska finally pulls something out of its hat in Madison, I think that's the only possibility for Iowa, if they should run the table, for Iowa to get back in it. I really don't take Minnesota that seriously, except for this week, and we'll get into that um, maybe more later, uh, definitely tomorrow on the pick segment. Um, so I, I really don't I, I don't think Purdue's going to win uh, this weekend against Ohio State. So I, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Nebraska, Minnesota. The, I don't know really where they drop one unless it's Nebraska, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, so I, I, think I it's agree. Pretty it, cut and dried, especially with the way they're playing. It is rare in today's college football to see a team dramatically improve by essentially benching the quarterback as a position and playing with 10 guys, right? A lot of times you see teams improve because their quarterback gets hot. I think of 15 years ago with your Hawkeyes and Drew Tate, for example, right? This is the, I, I can't remember the last time a team got hot at the end of the year because they just decided we don't have a quarterback play with 10 guys. But it is working for the Badgers here. The la- it's not just that they're beating teams, but they are dominating them in the process. All right, let's get to the Big Ten East race at a glance, and the East occupies three of the spots uh, in the top 10 uh, in the college football playoff rankings. rankings. We'll talk about those in a second, and as Aaron indicates in the header there. Uh, the Purdue win over Michigan State does open the door for the Wolverines again. I mean, even, even though they lost to Michigan State, Michigan now controls its own destiny uh, in the Big Ten East, provided Ohio State beats Michigan State at home, which they'll be heavily favored to do. And so you look at Ohio State's schedule, all three of these are ranked teams. Purdue is ranked now Michigan State of course is a top 10 team and then the rivalry game that isn't a rivalry anymore at Michigan Michigan State uh, faces two tough uh, teams that should be ranked but aren't Penn State should be in the playoff rankings this week they aren't Ohio State of course is they're in the top four but don't sleep on Maryland here I mean, Maryland does one thing really well you know what it is throw the ball what's the one weakness Michigan State's team has stopping the pass so that's something to keep in mind and then michigan has uh penn state on the road wolverines have not won there in happy valley since harbaugh's first year in 2015 that was a noon kick by the way which is what this game is michigan and ohio state basically uh switch on and off every other year being the whiteout game for penn state it just worked out this year that that's not the case because the game's in november michigan then plays maryland at home before the perennial drubbing against ohio state uh the reality check where boot meets uh, uh ant so you look at those schedules the door is open for michigan 
but they still have to walk through it here. Nobody has a really easy schedule in the East when you look at those remaining scads, Aaron. Yeah, just going through this um, one by one, you know, W and Ling uh, fr- from this point. I, I think Michigan State will will likely. Uh, I mean, that environment at the at the horseshoe. Uh, I, I think they should take care of business this weekend, but uh, going on the road to Ohio State, uh, goodness gracious, I'm not sure about that one. And then who knows what Penn State, uh, what its coach will be playing for at the end of the season. It, it may be that he's trying to get some style points to lock down whatever job he, he wants to get. Uh, I, I don't even know if that's even a possibility at that point. So it's really intriguing, but I think Michigan State would likely, in my in my view, probably be uh like a probably my third favorite at this point because i think it's more likely that that michigan has a chance to challenge than than they do uh, i'm sorry nebraska east uh looking at nebraska east's schedule at penn state <laughs> you know i was actually and i'm not meaning this to be an insult to you uh i, I was actually pretty dead set last weekend on betting on penn state and then you came in on monday and you were like yeah penn state's gonna win so i'm now i'm d- doubting myself I think maybe Nebraska East actually has a chance in that game. Uh, you'll, you'll see tomorrow. I'm not very confident one way or the other. Definitely not going to bet on it, though. Uh, they should take care of Maryland. And then Ohio State, maybe they can pull something out of their butts. Ohio State, I think, should roll through the, You know, at least its first two games. I don't know if this Ohio State team is built like some of the other teams that have rolled into Ann Arbor and just rolled up on on Nebraska East in the past. I, I don't know that. So I don't think this is just going to be a drubbing. It, it will be a but, drubbing. Uh, but I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I think they should, I don't know. It could be, it could be, um, it could be Nebraska East's year. That's heresy. I remember way back, you know, in 2018 and Ohio State, Urban Meyer gets suspended. They they barely beat Nebraska that year, barely beat several teams, should have lost to Maryland the week prior, right? Urban Meyer's pulling his hair out on the sidelines of all these games. Michigan's on the revenge tour, just naming the score on all these teams for the, for the first two months of Big Ten play. Michigan's favored in Columbus for the first time in the year two, since the year 2000. It was Michigan's year, right? Michigan's in the top four of the playoff ratings, and Ohio State put up a 60-burger. So I've been here, done that, bought the T-shirt, shirt been ridden hard who's, who's and put the, away wet who was ohio state's quarterback in 2018 Dwayne haskins who was the yeah. first first round picket quarterback in the big 10 since Kerry collins in 1995 yeah. i don't think their core, current quarterback is is quite up to haskins level in my opinion yeah he will be on the final saturday in november so let's get to the college football playoff rankings and from a big 10 perspective i gotta tell you well, let me do this first. Can you permit this of me? Sure. Let me, because me, you know I'm, I'm a critical thinker. I try to look at things analytically. I'm not going to do that for a second, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to go total slap, maize and blue, Michigan fan for just a second, okay? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even when Sparty wins, they still lose. Now, that notwithstanding, okay, let's set that aside. Let me be a fan for just a second. Yeah. All right. Now back to just being Steve, Steve Dace, okay? This is a preposterous ranking. Michigan and Michigan State have virtually the same strength of record, meaning how dominant they were in the Mm -hmm. games that they won, have virtually the exact same strength of schedule. They played on the field two weeks ago. Who won the game? Michigan State. Did they, they, They won the game when they played, right? They won the game? Yep. Okay. Now, why is Oregon rated ahead of, of, of Ohio State, which I support and told people all along, that's at least how the playoff rankings would start, okay? Why is Oregon rated ahead of Ohio State? Because they beat Ohio State. Yeah, on, by, any other, by any other metric, would Oregon be rated ahead of Ohio State? No. But they played, so you have to honor that, right? Yep. Can you help me to understand how it is possible— because now, now I'm going to do the whole love your neighbor as you love yourself thing. If this was the, if it was the shoe was on the other foot— I mean, I'd be losing my damn mind right Mm -hmm. now. Help me to understand how the same playoff committee, it's your AD running the show, which should have told me right away that this thing was effed because your AD sucks. So help me me understand how we have to honor the head-to-head between Oregon and Ohio State in week two of the season. But we don't have to honor the head-to-head of Michigan and Michigan State two weeks ago. 
Yep. Can you help me to understand that? I, I there's that to me. You've got narrative casting there. That's exactly what it is. This is doing everything they can to try to get the school with the bigger brand, as as ranked as high as possible, to even absorb a loss to Ohio State and still get him in the Rose Bowl or a New Year's Six Bowl ahead of the team with the lesser brand in Michigan State. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't know. It was a pretty big, uh, pretty big win for Nebraska East against um, Indiana. Yes, last with, a, with their fourth string quarterback and walk on running yeah. backs. Yes. No, I, I think I, I think what will end up resulting from this from this ranking, um, at, at least this year, is eventually um, eventually one of these teams or maybe all of these teams that were wronged are going to be the recipient of a massive, massive payday thanks to some lawsuit because that's one thing that Gary Barta does extraordinarily well is pay people a lot of money in lawsuits. Here's what has this this is why I'm convinced and you'll see I'm pretty confident in the confidence picks when we do these tomorrow. This thing just cemented that Penn State's beaten Michigan. Okay. This is now this is such an obvious scam. And I say this as a Michigan fan. I bleed maize and blue man and I I texted my, all my Michigan buddies around the country when these ratings came out last night. I was, I almost, I pissed my pants. I laughed so hard. Really though, okay? it, it's so petty. It, it really is so petty. What's the difference between six and seven? The difference is who gets to the Rose Bowl if they have the same exact record. That, that's a pretty big difference. <sighs> yeah, but why don't you do that yeah. later on in the year, like after Ohio State beats Michigan State? See, this will, this to me is, the universe will step in here and punish us for this. We're losing to Penn State on Saturday because we're going to kick 14 field goals in the red zone, okay? Do you know in the second half against Michigan State, we got into plus territory on all five of our offensive possessions, and we had one field goal to show for it, okay? I mean, Michigan's red zone offense, the only school in America that has kicked more red zone field goals than Michigan is Colorado State. You don't, do you ever want to be in the company of Colorado State in literally anything in college football, Aaron? No. So now, now what will happen... Got some good uniforms. I like those uniforms. Not, they're underrated. You know what? That's a good call by you. Those are underrated. But see, what will happen now is the universe will step in and say, this is an obvious scam slight. It cannot stand. So Michigan must lose to Penn State on Saturday by the harshest means possible in order to correct this oversight. And that is coming now on Saturday. Mark my words. Also coming, well, actually, not here, now here. College basketball has arrived. So between uh, last night and then next Tuesday, because we'll tape next week's episode on Wednesday, here are the marquee matchups. By the way, Ohio State, man, barely escaping Akron last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indiana, Indiana barely yeah. escaping Eastern Michigan you last know, I'm night. I'm telling you, the MAC is actually an up-and-coming mid-major. They, well, I mean, Miami of Ohio, I don't know how good Georgia Tech is, but they went in on the road yeah. in Georgia Tech and beat them last night. Well, Buffalo, a lot of people think they're the favorite in the mm-hmm. MAC. They play Michigan tonight. That line opened at 16 this morning. I know, because I bet Buffalo at plus 16. At the time you and I are taping this, it's down to 12. All right, so that that line has been absolutely hammered. But we saw Kansas hammer Michigan State, who looks like they already have a point guard controversy. You know, they brought in that transfer. He did not play well last night. Uh, got outplayed by another guy on the roster. Illinois still playing without suspended players, particularly Kofi Coburn. Uh, they go to Marquette. That's where Shaka Smart is now. Providence goes to Wisconsin. Creighton in Nebraska in the intrastate showdown. And there's Michigan again. Michigan is not... Dude, they got all this preseason hype. Juwan is like, let's go Tom Izzo, man. Bring it on. Let's play a crazy non-conference schedule. So Michigan still has a really young team. Two of the first three games are no joke at all in Buffalo and Seton Hall. So college basketball is back. Big Ten basketball is back. Your thoughts on that and this opening week slate of games. Yeah, I I would say uh, just I, I watched most of the randomly most of the Indiana game last night as we're taping this on Wednesday. Um, you know, I, I actually thought, uh, Eastern Michigan was, looked pretty good. Actually, you know, you got up 20, that's a problem. You give up like a 21 point lead or whatever they had on him, but, uh, it, it wasn't a joke of a, of a competition. It wasn't a slippery rock or a Longwood or a North Dogwood tech. Um, so I, you know, I, I would say don't freak out some of these middle tier big 10 teams. Don't freak out if you're playing a Mac team or even one of the high mid major schools and they either beat you or, uh, or, or go close, um, you know, at, at the beginning of the season. Um, I, I just think there's a lot, uh, I don't know. 
tell me tell me if you think the, the same way, but I, I think there are a lot more questions going into this year than there have been for the last three or four years in the Big Ten outside of maybe Michigan and uh, let's Purdue. say Purdue. Yeah. Who brought everybody back. Yeah. yeah. So there there are a lot of questions and um I'm not really sure how much, how many answers we're going to get in the uh, non-conference portion of, of the season, but um, you know, like Creighton at Nebraska, Ugh. <laughs> that, I don't think we're going to learn much about Nebraska that night. Um, we learned I, a little something about Nebraska last yeah. night. Yeah, we learned they could cost my my chubby ass 500 bucks. We learned that, dude. Missing a wide open layup. Even. We learned don't, that. Don't, don't even. I I I, I missed 65. Thousand. Let's let's just. I missed a twenty five hundred to one parlay last night by two legs. So that's a enough, bad beat. In, enough of your belly aching. Uh, and you know yeah. what? Normally I play the Detroit Lions card, but in this case, I'm gonna. You're right. You deserve all the belly aching. Like for, that that for, would have been my for, for that like crushing disappointment. Salary in, in a year. Yes. In one night. Indeed. All right. Let us tell you about our friends over at DraftKings. Hey, football fans, if you're ready to score some free bets, now you can. When you bet on any NFL game this week with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, new customers who bet just $1 on either team to score can win $100 in free bets. So when a team scores, you score with DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code BIGGER10. Again, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code BIGGER10 and bet $1 on either team to score and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with the promo code BIGGER10 this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And remember, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Gambling Disorder Helpline at 800-270-7117, 21 and older, Michigan only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings kings.com slash sportsbook for full terms and conditions all right time now for our weekly game of would you rather here on bigger 10 aaron this one's pretty simple and it was the twitter poll we'll talk about here a little bit later on as well would you rather watch big 10 football or big 10 basketball big 10 football by uh, country mile wow uh you know I, I like, I'd say I like Big Ten basketball, and I, and I do, especially when, you know, football's not on. It's kind of the only show in town for the, uh, the, the long, cold, upper Midwestern winter months. Uh, but man alive, some of these, some of those Big Ten basketball games, when you start going and watching like other like mid-major and low-major uh, leagues play games, and I do for reasons sometimes, Big Ten, it's just like watching, it, it's like watching, uh, I don't, it's like watching two two guys just punch each other in the nuts all the time, just <laughs> over and over and over again. Some of some of the games are, are a little bit more beautiful, but it's just, it's ugly sometimes because of the officiating and, and the way rules aren't, are and aren't called. I think, um, I think for the uh, 10th consecutive year, Steve, the 10th consecutive year, uh, a tradition unlike any other. I think it's a <clears throat> point of emphasis. Freedom of motion in the Big Ten. And that's a point of en- interest or a f- point of emphasis for the first uh, month, month and a half of the season. Until about January 3rd. Until about January 3rd. Yeah. And that's a point of crap. Then we'll be emphasizing point. betting unders yeah. in Big Ten basketball mm-hmm. games. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it's an auto bet. Anytime I see a total of 138 or low and higher in a Big Ten game, I just bet under. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one's for you. Would you rather be Jeff Brom or PJ Fleck right now? Um, you know, I, I, this is a good call uh, in terms of uh, a diff or uh, in terms of being a difficult call because PJ Fleck just got a seven year contract extension. Now, then he went out there and, uh, and lost to Illinois and lost to Illinois. OK, but um, uh, but he's he's still playing for a division title. If he wins out. They win a division title in a year that they have been just decimated by injuries, and Tanner Morgan has not done much. Um, but I think I'd rather be Jeff Brom. The row the boat stuff and everything else, I've just followed enough of PJ Fleck. I just I, I know it's irritating, but I think it's also like really sincere. It's like, you know, he's kind of got a little he's his his persona is half life coach, half Pentecostal youth minister. And I think those things are actually legit real, you know, but not not for everybody. 
I like the way Jeff Brom calls a football game. Okay, so uh, even when he doesn't have the J- the Jimmys and the Joes, he still has some X's and O's. So I think I'd rather be Jeff Brom. All right. For you, uh, would you rather the Big Ten support expanding the college football playoff to 12 games, as was originally, or 12 teams, as was originally uh, discussed before the SEC's power play, or continue to push for an expansion to eight teams, which, as with the reports are indicating now, the Big Ten and the ACC prefer? I would uh, rather them continue to push for eight teams originally before the Texas Oklahoma power play came down. I would have said go to 12 teams because that's going to be the, I think, the best for promoting parity in all of college football. But now, as much as I like college football and as much as I like the idea of expanding the playoff, I like actually having leagues. I like actually having college football the way we know it now, to some extent. I actually like having that period. I think the fewer teams that are in the playoff, the less incentive you have for Ohio State or Michigan. I don't think Michigan ever would. I could see Ohio State going, though, jumping ship and doing like they did uh, at Oklahoma and Texas. Do whatever it takes, not only for the good of, uh, of the sport in general at a national level, do what's, whatever's best for your own conference and to try to keep it together. So whatever, whatever measures you can put into place to keep uh, teams from jumping ship by uh, lessening the incentive to do so, I think the better. I, I, I'm, I'm still dumbfounded that went down. The, the longer we get away from it, I, I'm still dumbfounded that went down with Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, good, good are, grief. Are you, are you there skeptical never? of a Texas program that has lost to Iowa State three years in a row? Is not going to be capable of competing at a high level in the Southeastern Conference, Aaron? No. Uh, yeah. I, oh, okay. Well, never mind. I, don't think Oklahoma, that I really don't think Oklahoma will be uh, uh, two either. I, I really don't. Not to the tune of winning six conference nope. championships in a row. That's nope. for sure. Final one is for you. Would you rather bet Ohio State minus 20 or Iowa minus five and a half? Those are the current lines as of today, Wednesday. I think I'd rather bet... Uh, well, the the total on Iowa Minnesota is you know, Stone Age, so laying points, laying almost a touchdown when the total of thirty seven two points. Iowa is favored by five and a half. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm laying almost a touchdown with such a low total. Not necessarily to me the closest thing to a line that stinketh this week is Ohio State, which barely got by Nebraska. Purdue gets the win of the week, gets into the college football playoff rankings, and is a twenty point underdog. And you know, you know, every regular Joe's out there, hey, man, I mean, that's way too many points. Grab mm-hmm. those points. Yep. That strikes me as it's 28 nothing Ohio State, about 10 minutes to go in the second quarter, right? Okay. And then it's just a matter of they're in total control the whole way. It's just a matter of at the end whether there's some back doors open by Purdue with that offense. So I think I'd rather lay the, tw- the 20 with Ohio State. Makes sense. All right, we'll come back, get to our Twitter poll results and our feedback of the week next. This week's Twitter poll results, we asked you, question I just asked Aaron, which do you prefer? And by a country mile, as Aaron just said, Big Ten football with 82% of the vote, 18% of the vote went to Big Ten basketball. I was surprised it was this lopsided. Just because of how elite the conference is and how many teams are competing year in and year out for the postseason and the championship compared to football. But alas, Big Ten football, as you put it, Aaron, by a country mile. Let's get to our feedback of the week this week. And this comes from Lane Vandermullen, who says, knocking off two top five teams in one season, Jeff Brom should not only not be on the hot seat, he should be getting a contract extension. And he did it, Aaron, with three quarterbacks and three defensive coordinators. So again, this guy's a trendsetter. Indeed. You know, as they uh, always say over in, in West Lafayette, when you have uh, three quarterbacks, you got one, right? When you got three defensive coordinators, you got one. So, right. You know what? It's it's working for them. Don't knock it till you try it, I guess. Um, that's It's unconventional. We'll, we'll put it that way. But whatever. I, you know, I, I don't think they won any, by any fewer points. I don't think they won. You know, can you can you win to certain degrees or wins just wins? I don't think they um, won any differently because they had three co- uh, coordinators or three Maybe they'd beat Wisconsin if they had four defensive coordinators. There you go. Yeah. You know, maybe they're onto something there. Here's what I know. Purdue has more wins this century over Ohio State than, Mich- than Michigan does, and they have more big wins. Brom does this one season against top five teams than Harbaugh does his entire career at Michigan. So don't Ouch. knock it to your rocket, brother. 
You know what I'm saying? That'll do it for this week's episode of Bigger 10. We are back at it again next week. Until then, follow us on Twitter at Bigger 10, all one word. Also, please leave us a five-star review, like, rate, subscribe, share, whichever may apply here on YouTube or iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. No matter how you access this episode each week, help us to find more Big 10 sports fans just like you. For Aaron McIntyre, I'm Steve Dates. We'll see you next week right here on Bigger 10. Thank you.